All right, the next one I wanna take a little bit of time to sort of walk you through is uh, the William Blake Archive. Um, this is a site that sort of looks looks very different from a lot of the other ones that we've seen. Um, it's definitely tons different from say Wikisource and Project Gutenberg because they just focus on sort of the plain text, right? Um, okay, so I, let's just sort of, sort of browse around this and we'll see what we can see, okay? So one of the first things I notice is that um, this has its whole URL, blakearchive.org, the William Blake Archive. It's got something called gallery mode. It's got all these things up here. I'm not sure what they are. Um, I might have to browse through these. Okay, here's a search box. It allows me to search titles, transcriptions, illustration descriptions, imaged tags, editor's notes, copy set receipt information. What's that, right? And work information. Okay, so it's got a pretty robust search feature up here. Um, searchable image tags, well, that's kind of interesting. Gallery mode works open in object view by default and reading mode. Okay, so this tells me that there are two different reading modes. I can read in gallery mode, that seems to be the default one, and here's reading mode, which is a different version. Okay, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click gallery mode just because that's the default. Um, here's a help page, here's a light box. I guess that means I can kind of collect things. Uh, and here's a link to Twitter. There's a table of contents here as well. Okay, so if I open that up, see a lot of interesting stuff here. Illuminated books, commercial book illustrations, separate prints and prints in a series. Okay, lots of stuff going on here. All right, here's some text, right? I don't yet quite know who wrote this, but this is this looks like it's gonna be a lot more, it's written in a lot more scholarly way already, okay? It's cited. Right, um, it's sourced. We've got lots of, of concrete information about specific versions of particular uh, copies of Songs of Innocence and of Experience. So this is telling me very obviously that this is a text uh, that's gonna be oriented toward a reader who's very interested in the history of printing, the object itself, okay? It's, it's a much more uh, scholarly oriented um, website, okay? Um, if I scroll all the way down here, what I'm seeing are, these look like individual copies. So here's copy B from 1789, the British Museum. Okay, so this is a version that's held in the British Museum that's been all digitized. Here's a version held in the Library of Congress. I think the 54 objects are probably the pages. So if we look into this, here's the first object, which is the first image. Right, and then it looks like we can read through, and here's the second and the third and so on, okay? All right, so let me go back. It's not letting me go back very well, here we go, okay. Um, all right, so there are lots of different versions. This is actually really interesting because I, they all look different. Like, look at this title page. These title pages are all different, right? <laughs> so which one are we actually looking at when we're looking at something like Project Gutenberg? Are we looking at the 1826 one from the Fitzwilliam Museum, right? Which one are we looking at? Okay, if I scroll down here, okay, here we have a list of all known copies. Okay, we can definitely get a sense that this is oriented toward a different kind of reader. This is oriented toward someone who wants to know about the specific copies, the material history, the illumination process, okay? Now we have all these related items, an island in the moon, a manuscript draft of Holy Thursday, which is what that is. Um, okay, so this is, this is definitely for the scholar, right? Blake's notebook, uh, a manuscript draft of the Garden of Love. We can go to the British Library and find it. Um, this is definitely for a scholarly audience. Okay, down at the bottom, this is also gonna give me some information, Blake and Illustrated Quarterly. Okay, so that's a journal article, a journal, a scholarly journal that's associated with it, okay. The Complete Poetry and Prose of William Blake, edited by Erdman. Okay, so here's actually a plain text version that they've kind of um, vetted, right? We know that it's, it, and this is the, this is what it looks like, okay? <laughs> this is actually great. I didn't know this existed. Um, I didn't scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. So this is wonderful. The next time I teach this, I'll probably use this as the text um, that everybody works with. 
Um, okay, so here we have um, a, a version of this particular right edition, contemporary edition of complete poetry and prose of William Blake. Okay, all right. So that's interesting. I didn't I didn't realize that. Um, if we go back, let me see um, and look at this. Contact the archive about the archive. Okay, I want to learn a little bit more about the archive. Here I would click this, and now I can read about the archive. Okay, so this is going to tell you a little bit about this particular site. Um, it's been here since 1996, um, how it came about, uh, how it was developed, right? partnerships, etc. cetera. Um, lots of information about who did what, editors, project staff, editorial principles. So the questions that I might have about, you know, who put stuff up on Wikisource or Gradesaber, I might, and how did they go about doing it? This might help me answer, at least with this particular site. Um, all right, let me go back. And let's actually look at some of the, look at a text itself. Let's look at this one from the Library of Congress. Okay, so there are a few things that I might notice here. It's definitely, it allows me to add this page to a light box and save it for later. I can magnify it so that I can look at all of the details, which is really cool. Okay. I can look at the true size, which is if I had this object in front of me as a, you know, as a person, right? Okay, so here's the actual size of the object, right? It's 11 by seven centimeters. So that was the size of the book itself, the object itself. That's kind of cool <laughs> to know. Um, okay, and now here's this thing called a diplomatic transcription. I wonder what that is. I'm gonna click that. No transcription for this object because there's no text on it, okay. All right, so here's the title page, right? and the, the subtitle page for Songs of Innocence. Okay, so one of the things I notice here is that we have line numbers, but normally this is not line one, right? Normally if we're citing poetry, this is line one, right? This is a response to the digital project that they're creating. They probably had to give each of these line numbers for some reason, I'm not sure why, but that's interesting to note, okay? All right, so it looks like we can look at the, um, the text as well as the transcription. This is in the gallery mode. Let me see what it looks like in the reading mode. Okay, so a little bit different. It opens automatically with the image here and the text, right? And we can scroll, that's kind of cool. Let me turn off the magnify because that's a little distracting. Okay. Okay, so this is sort of an interesting way to read it because remember that Blake's poems were originally meant to be illustrated, right? Not just text, okay? So this gives me a very different reading experience. It feels like it might be much more, I don't know, maybe more authentic or more um, closer to the actual object itself, right? I know what I'm looking at, definitely, okay? I'm getting a more rounded and complete picture of the text, especially since I'm getting the images as well. There are probably lots of other things I can explore here, but in general, always make sure you're looking for an about page, making sure you're, you're you know, who put it up there, right? How did this material get onto the web, right? If you don't know that, then don't assume that it's a good source, okay? <laughs> uh, and a few other, a few other things you can definitely take a look at. I won't go over all the details here, but that should give you a bit of an overview of some of the ways you might look at this text.